Oh boy, you guys are lucky as hell today. Y'all have been blessed by whatever God you worship. For you have the opportunity, no, the privilege, to be the first introduced to the man, the myth, the legend, D7. The champion of the people. The first man of the world to ever join the Ruga Rabbit membership. What a goddamn bro. Never before in my life have I met a man with such panty dropping sexual charisma. Man gets more bitches than you get texts. You goddamn nerd. If you want even half the swagger of this man, come and join the Ruga Rabbit membership. We're gonna treat you right. Give you and me a good old rub. Now for the question of the day. Does Street Fighter 6 have a good story? No. No, it doesn't. It's it's downright foul, actually. But I'm not just here to shit on the story. I'm gonna talk about what it did right, what it did wrong, and what it could have possibly changed to be better. So, let's get started. I've been able to narrow it down to four major mistakes that this game made. And when I tell you what those mistakes are, you're gonna think I'm being cheeky, but I'm not. I'm gonna explain myself. So the mistakes are the beginning, the middle, the end, and the protagonist. And you might be asking yourself, well, goddamn, Ruga, that's the whole fucking game. And to that I say, bitch, did you not just hear me? I just said I was gonna explain it. Give me a second. No one ever told your impatient ass that patience itself was a virtue? I'm gonna do that right now. So at the start of the game, there's this massive terrorist attack on a country called Nashal, which is caused by JP, who is a high-ranking member of Shadowloop. Shadowloo is the organization that M. Bison was over. JP frames Ken Masters for this, and then he goes on the run for several months, being chased by Interpol and all kind of other interested parties. He basically becomes the most wanted man in the world for quite a while. Eventually, with great effort from his part, he does clear his name. Hold, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Back up for a sec. I'm sorry, I'm lying. None of that's in the fucking game. See, as interesting as a story like this would be as the inciting incident of Street Fighter VI, it actually takes place before the events of this game. And this here lies the problem. The entire plot of this game is kicked off and revolved around this Nashal incident. But we never actually see the Nashal incident. It's never really clearly explained what the Nashal incident was, why it happened, how it was caused, how Ken Masters was framed, or any other details that we really need to know about it. And before you say that the events of the Nashal incident are in a prequel comic, I know, and I don't care. You should never have to go back and read a goddamn prequel comic just to understand the story of a game that you're currently playing. No, I didn't read the comic. No, I'm not going to read the comic. The main plot of this game revolves around a character named Bosch who wants revenge on JP for what happened during the Nashal incident. This incident pushes forward the plot of Ken Masters, Guile, Luke, Bosch, and many other characters throughout this game. And every time they talk about it, you don't know what the fuck they're talking about. This world tour mode really likes to waste your time having you do a bunch of stupid little side content that isn't important and has absolutely no weight tied to it. And they never once felt the need to explain to you exactly what the Nashal incident was. And when I say that they didn't explain what the Nashal incident was, I mean it. We don't know if this terrorist attack was an explosion, a gas leak, some kind of biological virus. The game doesn't even give you that little of information. Information. And this is why the beginning of the game completely fails, because the story is all about you playing as this fucking goober, chasing Bosch around the world trying to stop him from doing some stuff that he might regret. That's the whole main plot. See, Bosch is from Nashal, and he wants revenge on JP for what JP did during that Nashal incident. Without knowing anything about that incident, this story falls completely flat. I don't understand why Bosch is so pissed off at JP. Later in the game, when you actually visit Nashal, everyone seems to love JP, who lives there. Apparently, he pulled them out from being a third world country into a developing country, and he introduced their society to a bunch of advanced technology that it never had before, while also keeping its culture intact. Everyone seems to be mostly positive on him as a person. So why does Bosch want to kill him so badly? We don't know. This problem would be easily done away with if either one, Bosch explained why he was so pissed off at JP, or we saw the Nashal incident ourselves. Neither of those things happened. So from the very start of the game, we're kind of doomed to just not give a shit. Also, important question needs answered. How does Bosch know? Know that JP caused the Nashal incident? Like, up until very recently, everyone thought Ken did it. He was framed for it. And after Ken's name is cleared, he spends the entire game trying to find out who framed him, and he never finds out who it is. But the game never tells you how Bosch knows JP did it, because no one else in the game seems to know that he did it. Just another thing that's not explained. Now on to the middle. Man, is this game uneventful. The whole game from beginning to end is about 14 chapters long, and out of that 14 chapters, maybe three of those chapters might actually be important important content that's relevant to the story. The entire rest of the main storyline is just 
bullshit busy work and exposition about stuff you don't really need to know that much. I was scrolling through YouTube the other day and I saw a video that was titled something along the lines of the storyline of Street Fighter 6 in under a minute. And I thought to myself, yeah, that sounds about right. I can describe the entire plot of this game in under a minute. There just really isn't anything of value that happens throughout like 80% of this game. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, it's a fighting game. Story doesn't matter in a fighting game. Well, for one, I'd say you're on the wrong channel. That's kind of what we do here. But also Capcom clearly put a lot of effort into this mode. Like this is obviously where they put the majority of their design time into. And it's also very clearly based on Yakuza, which is a game that's very well known for its great character and story writing. I mean, I played through World Tour for about 60 hours doing all the side content and main content. And they took the time to actually write all these storylines and put them in the game. So for pretty much every single one of them to be completely pointless and just bullshit busy work is not a good thing. And they don't get a pass on it just because they're a fighting game. If you're going to make a mode that's similar to Yakuza, you got to expect that you're going to be compared to Yakuza. And this shit is just trash. The main plot of the story seems aimless most of the time. You never know what you're doing or why you're doing it. Literally not a single character in the roster actually has an important role in the story, which makes them all completely wasted. I mean, as far as the main story goes, you have Luke that appears at the very beginning. You have Jury that appears in the middle for one scene. And then you have JP who appears in the last chapter. All three of these appearances are basically just cameos. And while every character on the roster does appear in the story, those three are the only ones that actually influence that story. The rest literally just show up, say hi, and leave. All right, so think back to all that stuff I said about Ken earlier in the video and all that interesting stuff that he did, you know, getting framed and then having to clear his name and all that. Well, in the actual game, all that stuff is done with and he's on a search to find the person who framed him. This is according to his arcade story. Despite the fact that the person who framed him is JP and he's the main villain of the game and the person you end up having to fight at the end of the game, Ken doesn't actually do anything in the main story relating to that. The game says that he's on the hunt for the person who framed him, but when you actually play through the story, all he does is stand in one location at this random construction site, and when you go talk to him, he just gives you random details about his backstory. He talks about his family, he talks about different stuff that's happened in past games. He's really just there to give you a constant drip of nostalgia. He has no purpose in the story, despite his story in this game relating directly to the main plot. And this is the case with pretty much every character on the roster. They're standing in some location, you can go talk to them, they tell you a bunch of random factoids about them themselves. You can give them gifts or fight them occasionally. They teach you their martial arts so your character becomes stronger, but they don't influence the story. And that's essentially what the entire middle section of this game is. It's just you going around finding people who are on the roster, talking to them and learning fighting styles from them. But nothing that they say directly relates to the story of the game. Even if those characters' stories in the arcade mode and what they're currently going through directly relates to the story. There are two main characters in this game that are actually important, and neither of them are on the roster, nor are either of them actually explored as characters. It's really quite baffling. Now, the end of this game is actually really interesting because it, um, it, uh, it doesn't exist. I'm not kidding. There's no ending to this game. There's no ending to the world tour mode. There's no ending to the vast majority of the arcade storylines. There's just no ending in this game to be found. So basically this game has two ways of getting your story. You have your arcade mode that has an individual story for every character on the roster. And then you have your world tour mode that is basically the main story that you follow for the vast majority of the game. For the arcade mode, you basically have three options. One, a character has no story at all and they spend the entire arcade just running around the world fighting different people for whatever various reasons they want to. Two, they have some goofy joke story like Zangief. Or three, they actually do have an interesting story that does relate directly to the world tour main story but that story doesn't have an ending and when you jump over to the world tour mode it's the same thing at the end of the game boss who you've been chasing for the entirety of the game dies unceremoniously you end up fighting jp you kind of sort of defeat him in a way he laughs in your face tells you that everything you've done throughout the whole game had no purpose and then it just sort of ends we don't know what happens to jp we don't know what happens to the main character we don't really know what happens to anyone there's an after credit scene involving luke that doesn't help anything at all and that's it. It just feels like across the entire game, they didn't write an ending. This is annoying in of itself because it's just bad storytelling, but it gives you this added sense of annoyance because you kind of just feel like Capcom's going to sell you the ending later on in a DLC or something. It just feels like they sold you an incomplete game. I'm not kidding. With the beginning of this game not really being in the game and the end of the game not really being in the game, it just sort of feels like someone wrote a story, took out the first act, the third act, and just decided to make this entire game about the second act, but it wasn't really long enough 
enough to cover an entire game, so they just filled it with a bunch of filler, basically. And that's the story of Street Fighter VI. It's not like the stories that they have written here are bad. Ken's story is interesting. Guile's story is interesting. Kimberly's story is interesting. Bosch's story is interesting. The whole stuff with JP could be interesting. It's just not here. It's not in the game. It's found in outside comic books or going to be sold to us later. The whole game has this very greedy vibe to it because of this. Not that it even matters because any good story that you could have told would have been ruined anyway by the goober. The goddamn goober. Goober. God, I fucking hate this guy. I'm just gonna come out and say it. There was no reason to have a created character in the world tour mode of this game, and having one just ruined the entire story. I'm not saying that there shouldn't have been a created character in Street Fighter 6 at all. It's great in the battle hub, that's really fun. But for the actual story mode that's in world tour, it just makes everything worse. This character doesn't speak. He doesn't have any opinions of his own. He's not really a character. All he does is stand around and make stupid fucking faces while reacting to things that other characters do. He has no goals or story of his own and just watches other characters' stories play out. But because you're not playing as those characters who actually have the stories, you don't get to see their stories. You're just stuck with the goober the whole damn game. Instead of being involved in dynamic scenes where your character is conversing with all of the other characters in the roster, and interacting with each other in interesting ways. The character just stands there staring at him like he's fucking stupid, while these characters just blab on and on about all these different references that happen in other games. It kind of feels like you're a tourist visiting Disneyland, with all the employees having to act like all the Disney characters just saying random shit from the movies. But none of the characters in the story evolve or go through any real storylines. And a lot of this is due to the fact that you're playing as the goober. I mean, the main crux of the story is the friendship between goober and Bosch. The little parts of this story that actually focus on the main plot are all about you chasing this guy all around the world, trying to stop him from doing something that endangers his life and the lives of other people around him. And there's multiple scenes in the game that are trying to make you emotionally invested in the relationship between these two characters and feel bad about their friendship deteriorating into an antagonistic relationship and even make you feel bad at the end when Bosch eventually kills himself. But because this decent idea for a story is told through this nothing of a character, the entire plot falls completely flat. So is there just like no hope for this game? There's just no fixing it and it was gonna suck no matter what? Well, no. The thing that makes this story so frustrating is that it could have very easily have been fixed. The bones of what could have been a good story is here. They're just broken, beaten, and thrown in a dumpster. So how could it have been fixed? Well, for one, you start the game with the Nashal incident. We actually see it happening, and that kicks off the plot of the game. Get rid of the goober and eliminate him from the story entirely. You make Bosch the main character and the playable character that you go through the story with. You can still have the character customization with Bosch the same way you had it with the goober. You'd still be able to customize his clothing, his fighting style, and his stats, just like you could with him. The only difference now is that you actually have a character that has a voice actor and a canon look, and his own storyline, and a reason to actually go through that storyline. I mean, if the whole storyline is going to be kicked off by a terrorist attack that hits Nashal, wouldn't it make sense to have your main character be someone who was born and lives in Nashal, like Bosch? You can then make the story about Bosch having to go around the world and get stronger so that he can prepare himself to take on JP. Don't have every single character in the roster just become masters because that doesn't make any sense. This is one of the dumbest concepts of the game. All of these characters are different people. They have different desires and personalities. It does not make sense that every single character on the roster would just gladly take you on as a student. Allow your protagonist to interact with these characters in different ways that fit their personality and introduce them into the story in a natural way. That completely fits who they are as characters, but there's no reason why someone like Jury or JP would ever train the main character of the game. Why are characters like Luke, Kimberly, and Lily training you? Lily is a 14-year-old girl and Kimberly is still in the middle of her ninja training under Guy. Luke just got into street fight not that long ago and is currently being trained by Guile. All these characters were introduced as the next generation of street fighters, the up and comers. They should be rivals or allies to your character, not mentors. Luke straight up says at the very beginning of the game that he's not much of a trainer and isn't very good at it. But then throughout the game you meet like dozens upon dozens of characters who were trained by Luke and every time you go to the gym Luke is in there training like five or six people. This doesn't just conflict with Luke as a character but it actually conflicts with the story that's being told. They already wrote wrote into the game the fact that Goober has the ability to imitate the moves that he sees near perfectly. That is a skill that they gave the character. If that's a skill he's capable of doing, there's no reason to have to make all of these characters his masters. You can make some his masters, some his enemies, some his friends, and through interacting with these characters in different ways, he can copy their moveset without actually being taught by them.
them directly. This would allow you to write the story in a way that can incorporate all these different characters in ways that feel more natural to the way that they would actually behave. Absolutely, most importantly, give this game an ending and change the last third of this storyline. I'm sorry, but the end in quotations of this game just straight up doesn't make sense. The end of the game revolves around a tournament that JP is holding and Bosch plants a bomb on the belt that's going to be given to the winner of the tournament. So Bosch has to win the tournament so that he can be given the belt directly by JP and then activate the bomb and blow them both up. That's the plan. This is stupid for so many reasons. If he's capable of planting a bomb on the belt, why doesn't it just have a remote detonator? Why does he have to physically press a button to activate the bomb? And why put the bomb on a timer if that's the case? JP in the story isn't even shown to be hiding from anybody. You can just walk up and talk to him before the tournament even begins. There's no reason to have this convoluted plot. Just have the main character, who in this theoretical version is Bosch, train until he's strong enough to fight JP and then go after JP. Then you can have the goober be replaced by another character who is close friends with Bosch, who essentially chases him in order to stop him. This person can be the rival to Bosch throughout the game. I would say you should probably choose Luke for this. Luke is a character who has a history in the shawl, so it makes sense that he would know Bosch and they could be friends. They're both young guys who are just getting into street fighting and just mastering their martial arts styles. And Luke is the character who Capcom wants to be the Ryu replacement, the new main protagonist of the series once they retire the character of Ryu. So having him have a more important role in the story where he's the good guy trying to stop Bosch from making a terrible decision makes a lot of sense. This would also allow Luke to have more of a role in the story without making him a playable character to which you would sacrifice the whole creating your own fighting style thing. Then at the end of the game when Luke tries to stop Bosch from making this stupid decision that he's going to make, their fight can be more impactful because now you have two characters that both have voice acting, both have an actual character to speak of, and you can have all of your great emotional scenes and character development between these two people. So let's piece together this plot that we've sort of devised over the course of this video. The game opens up with our main protagonist protagonist Bosch as he's living in his home in Neshaw. In this country is an American military base and stationed there is Luke. Luke and Bosch are friends and also training buddies. And Bosch is a very rare talent that he's able to perfectly copy the fighting moves of other characters. This opening section of the game would act as a tutorial and a way of understanding the systems, but also convincing the player that Bosch and Luke are close friends. Shortly into the game, the Neshaw incident happens. Some kind of bombing or poisoning or something happens within the country of Neshaw that kills a lot of people. Perhaps someone very close to Bosch ends up dying because of it. This incident is caused by JP and then he frames Ken Masters for it, although Bosch doesn't know this. Ken goes on the run and then Bosch decides to chase him out of anger of what happened. Luke knows that there's something not quite right here as he has a connection to Ken. His mentor is Guile, who is the brother-in-law of Ken, and he just knows that Ken isn't someone who would do something like this. So he chases after his friend Bosch to make sure that he doesn't do something that he might regret. Through Bosch's pursuit of Ken and trying to find where Ken is, he ends up coming into contact with all sorts of other organizations and characters. He can come into contact with Neo Shadaloo, Jury Han, and all these sort of characters as he's searching, as well as other characters like Kimberly who are also trying to find out what happened during the Nashal incident. Some of these characters will be enemies and some of these characters he'll befriend, but regardless of this, meeting these characters in the game will increase Bosch's skill as he will be able to copy their moves. So as you go through the story, Bosch will slowly get stronger and stronger. Perhaps there could be some massive boss fight in the middle of the game where Bosch actually tracks down Ken and they get into some really big fight. From this point, they can really do it any way they want. Perhaps he's convinced or it's proven to him, but some way or another, Bosch will realize that Ken actually wasn't responsible for it. After this point, Ken can become a mentor of sorts to Bosch. Not so much teaching him how to fight, but more like a wise older mentor who can give him life advice and things like that. This will also allow Ken to have a closer involvement in the story. At some point in the story, he will find out that JP was actually the cause of what happened and then start hunting him. There will then be another very big boss fight where Bosch will lose against JP. This is where the darker aspect of his storyline begins. See, Bosch up to this point has never seen Psycho Power before. He had no idea what it was capable of. And seeing how JP was on a completely different level from anything he had ever seen up to this point, he starts to become very desperate, thinking that there's no way a human could possibly defeat someone like that. This is what then causes Bosch to dabble into psycho power himself for the sole purpose of defeating JP. This is where his spiral begins, and where most of the character moments between him, Luke, and Ken are really going to hit hard. Luke and Ken both see this very self-destructive path that he's going down. While Ken will be involved in this a bit, Luke will really take the reins here, as the main rival to Bosch, your playable character. Bosch's hunt for JP will continue as he meets more characters and becomes more powerful, learning more moves and mastering his psycho power. 
until eventually he does find JP. The final fight of the story mode is going to happen at the top of a mountain because epic fights always happen at the top of mountains. And then at this point, you can really have the game end any way you want. You can have Bosch fight Luke before he fights JP, defeating Luke and then going on to fight JP. You can have Luke defeat Bosch and then fighting JP in his stead, knowing that he can fight him without corrupting himself. You can have JP beat the both of them. Like the skies really are the limit here. But the important part is however you decide to end it, the arc needs to end in this game with some small seeds of storylines that you can then use in future games. Now, what I just gave was a very, very basic structure that you can follow. The details can be whatever you want them to be. You can have something like Luke feeling responsible for what happened in Shaw for whatever reason and him feeling responsible for the path that Bosch is going down. Bosch's relationship with Luke could stay friendly the whole time or it could become more and more destructive till they're basically enemies by the end. Bosch can dive deeper into the darkness and just straight up be consumed by it or he can come back from it and become more of a heroic character who sacrifices his own revenge because he thinks it's the right thing to do. Maybe you swap out Ken as the mentor with some other character. Maybe you don't have a mentor. Maybe Guile is also tracking down Ken so he can prove his innocence and then he becomes an antagonistic force against you. Then maybe Luke and Guile will come to blows because they disagree on how to handle you. Luke having to go up against his own mentor because he's trying to protect his friend. Like I said, you can do a lot of stuff that would be really cool as long as you have a good structure there. And really that's all it is. Like the story I just came up with is not a 10 out of 10 story. It's probably like a 6 out of 10. But a standard 6 out of 10 story with a good story arc, characters, and relationships is really all you need for a game like this. Just a cool martial arts story about loyalty, friendship, revenge, honor, all that classic shit that timeless stories were always about. Hell, you can even throw some romance in there. Kimberly is a character who's trying to find the guy who killed her uncle, and it's actually JP who did it. Maybe while she's on the path looking for that, she comes across Bosch. They have the same goal. They team up. They grow a mutual respect for one another and eventually start to sort of get this sexual tension going. They bond over a mutual loss. Now, obviously, they don't have to jump in the sack in this game, you know? Just sort of build it up and have it questioned here, and then maybe have it actually occur in a later game. You can even have Kimberly side with Bosch going up against Luke. And now we got a Luke versus Kimberly fight in the game. And this is the kind of stuff that we want to see in our fighting games. We want to see all these cool matchups and interactions between all of these characters. I don't know why so many fighting game franchises don't realize that this is what people want to see when it comes to a fighting game story. It just seems like common sense to me. It's just a shame that in the final product, we didn't get anything close to that. Just a bunch of unfinished storylines and nostalgia bait. Anyway, I know it's kind of a downer ending, but uh, it is what it is sometimes. If you like this video and you think I should make more Street Fighter content, please comment down below and tell me. I always love being able to expand my repertoire and making different videos about different stuff. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, click that little bell icon, and y'all be safe out there, you hear?